This is Keith Price's Kirk. So this is Keith Price for Keith Price's Curtain Call, and we are at the Classic Stage Company's, like, I guess this is your green room, shall I say? I'm talking to everybody that's in the room because that's what I do. I can't help myself. And it's very exciting because the Samuel French Off-Off-Broadway Short Play Festival is actually about to begin. And I'm sitting here now with Amy Rosemarsh, is that correct? Yes, who is the co-artistic director of the Samuel French Off-Off-Broadway Short Play Festival, as well as... The literary, tell me again what your title is. You are the, I, I know your dram, dramaturgy is your, your scenario, but you are the, explain it to me one more time. I'm the literary director. Just literary director. Yeah, just directing literary things. <laughs> <laughs> Making something happen. I love it. So thank, well, thanks for joining me. This is really great. Now, we are here for the Play Festival, which is, for me, it's a, a new experience because I understand that this is like, how many years now? Almost 20 years of this? Oh, no. 41. No. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you, you have the opportunity to take new playwrights and give them a platform. But that's kind of your thing anyway, because you are dramaturg. You're now into this literary directing. How does this help you enjoy theater more? Yeah, it's it's cool. It's like the one time of year I we as a company get to do real time uh, submissions evaluation, which sounds so boring. But, you know, when you're in a publisher's office, you're at a desk reading scripts and then you kind of have to imagine them on stage. And this festival, the cool thing about it is, um, you know, we spend a lot of time reading. We have like 1500 submissions for this festival. It's crazy. Everything's under 30 minutes. And then the playwrights, you know, once they hear that they're in, there's 30 plays that go up. Um, they have to figure out how to get them here and make them happen. So it's always a bit of a adventure in that. But then we get to actually relax and see them. And we invite people from the industry to judge the plays. Right. So. So, so here's the question then. What is your criteria then for, for these particular things besides them being just under 30 minutes? What do you look for in these pieces? It's everything. So, I mean, I think it's it's interesting because you'll, you'll see some of the plays tonight. But, you know, some of them are comedies. Some of them are dramas. Some of them are completely absurdist. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had plays that are we have musicals in this festival occasionally um, we have kind of one person performance pieces uh, this year we have our first puppet show that I can remember There's a, it has human actors in it too but it's also a lot of puppets very Avenue Q yes yes yeah I, mean, I think it's going to be a fun one and it's a comedy um, so you know there's always a range of stuff I think it's really about you know whatever the playwright sets out to do um, did they achieve that like if they set out to write a really funny farce comedy you know where everything's on its head and you know people are running around screaming like does it work is it super funny is it super madcap like did you enjoy yourself um if they set out to write i, I think there's a drama tonight um that's about police brutality and like is it emotionally effective like does it really um so so yeah it's a whole range i mean the best thing about this festival is like if you're not responding to the the play in 10 minutes it's a completely new play completely new performance group Right. So it's kind of like you get to see, um, you get to see some really good stuff. Well, that means if if the criteria that you're using is that same kind of criteria, like with film writing, where yeah. they do the thing that in ten pages, if it's not popping in ten pages, then it's probably not going to be that good. Is that kind of also the same thing? Because I mean, you have a really short amount of time for these presentations, so they have to really jump off the page right away. How does that? Yeah, I think I think it's a bit of that. I th also think there's a, something interesting that happens where sometimes a writer has such a good idea or a unique idea. Um, you know, we don't quite know what to do with a script on the page, but it's something that all of us in the office really want to see in production. Like we're, wow. we get really excited by something and we're like, how would this work? How does it look? Like, how does it flow together? And then like, let's give the writer the space to explore that and see, you know, what it does on its feet. So and sometimes it's like amazing. There are some like, we've had some moments in the festival where everyone's just floored. Or we had one play one year about like the loss of a child where like everyone in the audience was crying together in like 10 minutes. It was like zero wow. to 60. <laughs> wow. And then, you know, there are some ideas where you're like, okay, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that needs some more development. But it's, it's a really exciting thing to watch you know, a lot of these writers, sometimes it's their first New York production. Sometimes it's their first production ever. Um, they've never had a play that they've written be on stage. So uh, also exciting to watch that process, too. I love that. Yeah. Amy Rose Marsh with me here on The Curtain Call. And we're talking about the Off-Off-Broadway Short Play Festival by Samuel French. And 
again, your history, though, is that you started off as a dramaturg. Is that correct? Yeah. In, well. D- in Washington <laughs> State. Like, where where did you get the love of theater? Because, I mean, you have to love theater to be sitting here reading 1,600 plays all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I grew up. I'm, like, such a... Um, you know, just like cornfields off the bus story. Like I grew up in a 300 person town. We had a bookmobile. I read all the plays on the bookmobile. The library would come to the school in a bus. And um, so, yeah, so I feel like I, you know, I really probably because when I was a kid, I didn't see that many plays. I really love reading them. And then it just kind of grew into a a thing. I I actually started at French as an intern, which is crazy. I told some of our festival interns today, I'm like, this is what happens. You give it 10 years and then you're still reading the plays. And you're still... (laughs) (laughs) And they're making money, hey! I'm like, I crawled my way up. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun here. I just like... You know, French is a like I, I don't want this to sound cheesy, but it's it's such a good company because, you know, uh, they really they really believe in the writers that we publish right. and the writers that we handle. So it's it's been cool. It's like they're we license plays all days to companies. And yet, uh, you know, we don't this is like our one chance a year we have to get our hands dirty and really know what it's like on the other end of it when you're trying to, like, produce and put things up and. So it's exciting. I like that that um, you know we're a publisher that puts our money where our mouth is. We're like we're gonna get our hands dirty. Yeah. All right. Well, Amy Rose Marsh, I'm assuming that I'm I'm gonna have to go because this this is a sweeping thing because you're not even finished writing your your no, finish, are I'm you? Basically on a napkin. My curtain speech is on a napkin right now. I gotta fix that. <laughs> I have to say one thing, though, that I think how exciting for you, as you said, your story of getting basically off the bus to big New York City to do uh, to come here and find a place which I think for me is really wonderful to hear. And it's for anybody else that's listening. This is a very good story. Like you said, you tell your interns. It's like, I mean, for anybody that's listening that wants to have a career working in theater, there's so many different avenues. And here you are as a living example of one of the avenues that even I never thought about. Like, wow. I I don't know that I knew that when I was, you know, back in the, you know, Pacific Northwest, I I didn't know that it was like an option. You didn't didn't see me. (laughs) Did you not see New York as part of your your plan? Well, I just I think I thought Samuel French was like an old dude that had an office and he just had a big stack of plays and there was like a yes published stamp and a no published stamp and that's how it worked and but that's that's not true at all and it's it's funny to to get here and realize oh there's a lot of people with big hearts and who are just huge theater fans obsessed with theater that are like living out their dreams it's great that's the best part yeah. wow well thank you so much amy rose marsh for joining me here on the curtain call she's got to finish her s- curtain speech she's busy very busy and this play festival now for people that want to know more about the festival they should just go to samuel french's webpage. yes so we have a big banner up on the samuel french page just samuelfrench.com um you can also go to oob.samuelfrench.com to get directly to the festival mm-hmm. also not to sound too cheesy again but we we have a big Facebook presence, big Twitter presence, big Instagram presence. So find us there. Yeah. And there's some very, very entertaining photos of the playwrights here in their plays. Um, and you can follow the results of the festival because of these plays, some will move on to finals, six get chosen for publication and licensing. You can follow the results. It's like the Olympics, basically. Fabulous. You can, Fabulous. Uh, they're going to be on Twitter. They're <laughs> Just like the Olympics. And again, and with this particular thing, there's also information for people who are actually listening, who are writing plays wherever they are in the cornfields of Washington. (laughs) Are there even cornfields there? I was going to say the Coffee Mountain building. No, but for for those people that are there, this is is an opportunity for them to even look for a place to submit their work if they have work that they want to put out there, right? Yeah, there is no, um, you know, there's no prereqs for this. And we take like, um, I mean, you'll talk to a writer in a second who has, you know, accolades and um, there are, I mean, we really don't look at people's resumes before we we select the plays. So some people, this this really is a first play. This really is a first excursion. So yes, wow. even if you you've written that play, you're like, I don't know what to do with it. I do not know how to get it to Samuel French. This is like send it to us. Wow. We love these. That's the best. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. God, this is so great. So yeah. again, Amy Rose Marsh of Samuel French, the literary. 
director. I was going to say literary agent. No, she's a literary director. Go to SamuelFrench.com for all the information about it and OOB.SamuelFrench.com for more information about the festival and how wherever you are, if you want to submit something, this is your chance. This is your moment. This is who you can get your Noel Coward on. Isn't that great? I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. All right. And we'll be back.